Washington, this is VOA News. Israelis and Palestinians get ready to sit down and talk peace. Dozens killed in Iraq violence. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Direct peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians are being held in Washington at this hour after a long stalemate. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is hosting Chief Negotiator Zippy Livni for Israel and Saeb Arakat for the Palestinians. Former U.S. Ambassador to Israel Martin Indyk is representing the State Department. The two sides will come together for more talks on Tuesday, but there are plenty of obstacles ahead. Robert Berger reports from Jerusalem. The new Israeli-Palestinian talks follow nearly five years of paralysis and skepticism on both sides runs deep. Twenty years of on-again, off-again negotiations have failed to achieve a final peace agreement with the creation of a Palestinian state. Israeli and Palestinian chief negotiators will try to hammer out a framework for the talks which will tackle the thorniest issues of the conflict. The status of Jerusalem, Palestinian refugees, Jewish settlements, and final borders. The return to -to face-to-face talks signals that the parties are prepared to give peace a chance. Robert Berger for VOA News, Jerusalem. Supporters of ousted Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi continued their protests Monday at Security Administration buildings, remaining defiant in the face of the military's move to install an interim government about a month ago. Pro-Morsi groups are calling for a million-person march on Tuesday for those who oppose Mr. Morsi's ouster. The European Union's top diplomat, Catherine Ashton, is urging Egypt's government to reach out to the Muslim Brotherhood as she meets in Cairo to mediate a resolution to the country's political crisis. More than a dozen car bombs exploded in the Iraqi capital Baghdad and other cities Monday, killing at least 58 people and wounding more than 200 others. The bombers appeared to have targeted mostly Shiite areas. Edward Uranian has more in our Middle East Bureau in Cairo. Ambulances ferried victims of a bomb blast in Baghdad's mostly Shiite district of Southern City. Witnesses say a blast inside a minivan transporting Shiite workers killed over half a dozen people. Car bomb blasts rocked at least six other Baghdad neighborhoods. Bloody explosions also struck the towns of Mahmoudia, Kut, Basra, and Samawa. Parliament Speaker Osama Nujafi, a Sunni, condemned the explosions, as did many other Sunni and Shiite political leaders. Edward Uranian for VOA News, Cairo. There has been no claim of responsibility for those bombings. Pakistani Taliban militants have attacked a prison in northwestern Pakistan in an apparent attempt to free jail terrorists. Witnesses say security forces are engaged in a firefight with the attackers at the prison in the town of Dera Ishmael Khan. A Pakistani Taliban spokesman is claiming responsibility for the attack. Pakistani authorities have not confirmed if anyone has escaped the prison. A Russian Federal Migration Service official says he believes it's best that former U.S. National Security Agency contractor Edward Snowden remain in Moscow's International Airport because he is safer there. Jessica Gulliher has details. Former NSA contractor Edward Snowden has been holed up in Sheremetyevo Airport for more than a month as he awaits temporary asylum here in Russia. Snowden's lawyer says his application for asylum has been submitted to Russia's Federal Migration Service, or FMS, and it's now a wait-and-see situation. Vladimir Volok is head of the FMS's public council. I 
I don't think it's good for Snowden to travel freely in Russia, and he is wanted now, Volokov says. He adds that he thinks the safest area for Snowden is in the transit area at the airport or in areas under the jurisdiction of the FMS. Jessica Gallagher for VOA News, Moscow. The United States is promising Russia it will not seek the death penalty for Snowden if he's returned to face espionage charges. The judge presiding over the court-martial of an Army private charge of leaking U.S. secrets to WikiLeaks says she will announce her verdict Tuesday. Bradley Manning was serving as an intelligence analyst in Iraq when he sent a vast cache of secret diplomatic cables and classified military reports from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to the anti-secrecy website. Manning faces a possible life sentence. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. More on our website at voanews.com.